Shelly, here in this thing called life, there is a thing called dreams. You know, when you dream of something that you want to be. What do you want to be, Shelly? What have you always wanted to be? That's a very interesting thing, Shelly. If only I knew what the hell that dream is. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Heroes in a half shell. Turtle power. Hey, what's up, everybody? Ah. This is 22 Tiger Dude here, getting my turtle power on, and I'm gonna be here to review Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Out of the Shadows. So Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Out of the Shadows is a sequel to the 2014 film Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. The film this time around is directed by Dave Green who directed Earth to Echo. The film stars Megan Fox, Stephen Amell, Will Arnett, and Tyler Perry. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is about when Shredder escapes from prison and he gets the help of Baxter, Bebop, and Rocksteady because he needs to create this portal in order for it to open so Crane could come to New York City and rule it. But in order for that to happen, Bebop and Rocksteady need to go find his device so they could open this portal. So of course, the turtles, it's up to the turtles, April O'Neil, Casey Jones and Will Arnett from time to time to go ahead and stop everything that Shredder and Crane are planning. And I really didn't have much expectations for this film because I didn't really care for the 2014 film. I didn't hate it. There's some entertainment value with that film, but overall it was just a very forgettable film that yeah, it just wasn't all that good. I know some people had fun with that film, and I could totally understand why. I just didn't really care for the 2014 film. But, now that I've seen Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Out of the Shadows, I'm going to say this. Cowabunga, I was surprised. I can't believe I'm saying this. I actually had a lot of fun with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Out of the Shadows. The actors that do motion capture on the turtles as well as voicing the turtles, they all do a very great job. Leonardo, Donatello, Michelangelo, and Raphael are still very enjoyable turtles. They still have the personalities of what the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles should be. They were really enjoyable in the first film. They were definitely the biggest highlight with the 2014 film, and that still carries on here. And the visuals on the turtles still look really great. I think in a way they kind of approved upon in the visuals with the turtles. Splinter, I have to definitely say, looks so much better here than he did in the 2014 film. Because in the 2014 film, he really did not look that great. He was quite cringeworthy. But in this film, the visuals on him definitely look a whole lot better. And Bebop and Rocksteady, two characters that I personally really enjoyed, and it's really cool to see them in a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles live action movie for the first time ever. They were really enjoyable characters. They definitely had some bits that made me laugh, and they were the characters that I've known from the cartoons because I did used to watch quite a bit of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles growing up, and I just remember really loving those characters. So to actually see them in a live action movie is really dang cool. Megan Fox, I like her as April O'Neil. At this point, I've accepted her as April O'Neil. You know, I've already did that with the first film. But in this film, I think she kind of embraced April O'Neil a little bit more. And because of that, I still feel like Megan Fox was a ton of fun. And also, we got Stephen Amell from Arrow, a show I personally enjoy. So it's really cool to see Stephen Amell be in this film. And I have to say, him as Casey Jones, great. 
he was really great in my opinion. Stephen Amell, he's just one of those actors that just has so much charisma to him. He brings so much energy to Casey Jones. Yes, it may not be the Casey Jones everyone is familiar with because he is a cop and I can understand where people are going to have complaints with that. I wasn't personally bothered with the fact that he's a cop. I would have liked to see more of Hockey Casey Jones though because you only get one scene with him and his hockey mask and all that. But it was still really cool and I still felt like for what Stephen Amell had to deliver, he was a very good Casey Jones. And Will Arnett, thank goodness. Is not the non-stop pervy Will Arnett from the 2014 film. Like, look, I understand. Megan Fox, she's a good-looking woman. I do think she's beautiful, personally. But when Will Arnett just keeps making all of those non-stop pervy comments towards her in the first film, it got really annoying, and it just got pretty awkward and cringy to watch. Luckily, there is none of that. None of that in the sequel. And Will Arnett's role this time around, although not as huge of a part that he had in the first film, I still really enjoyed him and I definitely really enjoyed him much better here than I did in the original film. The cinematography looks really good. It looks clean. It looks sharp. You can see what's going on. The action sequences in this film are very well filmed. There's so much energy into the action sequences and this film, like I said earlier, is directed by Dave Green, who directed Earth to Echo, which honestly, I didn't really care for Earth to Echo. I just thought it was an okay movie. But I have to say, to Dave Green's credit, he did a very good job of just directing the entire film. He directed the action scenes very well. In the first 15 minutes of this movie, as I'm watching this film in the beginning, it was already way better than the 2014 film. Like, I was watching the first 15 minutes and I was actually already having a lot of fun with this movie. Thank goodness the rest of the movie was still just as fun as it was in the first 20 minutes because you already start off with an action sequence followed by another action sequence with the turtles in their turtle truck and that was really fun to watch. Especially in the climax, there's some very cool shots that Dave Green uses in the climax that I was like, wow, that's actually a very cool shot. Like, there would be a point of view shot of Michelangelo, like you could kind of see a shot of him standing or just skating through all of those metal things that you see in the climax. And Krang, I actually really enjoyed Krang, who is voiced by Brad Garrett. I like Brad Garrett. I think he's a very cool dude. He looks like one of the most likable people out there. And to hear that he was going to voice Krang definitely had me a little bit interested in this film because like I said I didn't really have much expectations and he really pulled off Krang very well. His role is bigger in the third act of the movie but I still felt like he captured the personality of Krang very well. And also this time around this film we don't have William Fickner as Shredder uh, because I know that was a problem a lot of people had, which I can understand. So they do replace it with a different actor, this time being Brian Lee, I believe. Um, if I get it wrong, I will put it in there, but I felt like, despite the fact that Shredder, which I'm going to get more into later on, I felt like despite the fact Shredder really didn't have anything to do, I did feel like Brian Lee still did his part very well. Brian T. There you go. Brian T. He still did a good job as Shredder. What I also really liked about this film is how much heart there is to it. I really liked the heartwarming stuff between all of the brothers because the brothers have to figure out a way to work as a team because they're all different personalities. And one of the things that surprised me about this film is the message. I really like the message about even though you're going to have different point of views and be different, you know, it's what you guys do together that makes you a team. And that was honestly very cool. And Splinter, you know, in the first film, Splinter was more of a tough ass. But in this film, he was more calm, I guess you could say. He was being more 
fatherly to the turtles like when the turtles are feeling down like say for example when michelangelo is down splinter would give him advice and i said oh yes that's the splinter that i remember and i'm glad the movie fixed that because i found it weird that he wasn't really like them the 2014 film and i almost forgot to mention him but i actually thought tyler perry was really fun as Baxter Stockman. Every time he does goofy laugh, like his <laughs> uh, I just couldn't help but actually smile because I could tell that he really was enjoying himself with this role. So that was very nice to see. And I really enjoyed the climax for the movie despite an issue I had with it that I'm going to address in a little bit. But despite the negative I have with the climax, I still really enjoyed it. Now when it comes to flaws with this film, I definitely don't have as many problems here as I did with the first film, most definitely. But you know, by no means is this a flawless film because there are some flaws. Like Shredder, he's wasted in this film. Brian T still does a good job as Shredder. I still think he did a good job, but the script basically gave Shredder nothing to do. It's just him bringing Bebop and Rocksteady and getting Baxter Stockman. Shredder, he's really just standing there. And then, to top it all off, he doesn't even get a single action scene. Like, I was actually blown away he didn't get at least one action scene. He gets dressed up in his Shredder outfit towards the end, but no action involved. There's also this unnecessary aspect in my opinion where the turtles want to be humans again because of this purple ooze that they're carrying and that whole thing just felt shoehorned into the storyline. I get it because they want to blend with the citizens of New York. That's perfectly understandable, but they're turtles. It's who they are, and it just felt really weird that they went for something like that. Also, I didn't really care for the plot with Laura Linney and the other cops. A whole, should we trust the turtles and blah blah blah. It's that whole generic stuff that, you know, it's whatever. But I just didn't really care for any scene that Laura Linney was in. Laura Linney, she's fine in her role, but just the plot in general, not something I really care too much for. And the final problem, this is where I get to my negative with the climax. Like I said, despite the negative I'm about to mention, I had an absolute blast with the climax. I really did have a smile on my face watching the climax of this movie. But... The negative to it is that it does jump around too much. The climax does feel very overcrowded because it jumps to the turtles fighting Crane, then it jumps to Casey Jones distracting Bebop and Rocksteady, to April O'Neil and Will Arnett's character having to stop the portal. So it's like it's jumping to three things at once, and even though I'm enjoying the scenes, when it jumps around to those scenes at once, it honestly does get pretty distracting to me. And I will say that it does feel a little bit rushed in the climax too I felt like the pacing could have slowed down as well and I know there's so much going on the action is very fast paced so you can kind of understand why the pacing is fast but I do think the pacing when it comes to climax could have slowed down just a little bit and overall you guys that's really it I actually had a fun time with this movie like I surprisingly really enjoyed Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Out of the Shadows. This is now added to the list of sequels I actually thought was better than its predecessor. So cowabunga, I'm gonna give Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Out of the Shadows three out of four stars, or should I say three out of four turtle powers. So you guys, in the comments down below, let me know what you think of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Out of the Shadows. And between the 2014 film and the 2016 film, which one did you enjoy more? This is 22 Tiger Dude here, and don't forget that I will always have Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Heroes in the Half Shell, Turtle Power.